So, I bought another horse. Waking in the white sun lights out Waiting through the days in lights out It's a slow cinnamon summer Your spells pulling me under So, this is my new pony. I know she's um, a little bit bigger than my other ones. And I know I look tiny next to her, but that's okay. We'll work around it. Yes, we will. I've got all the questions on a list on my phone, so I'll start reading them out and answering them. I'll fuck up a little bit because my head's a little bit high. You can't see her. Ah, stop it. I really hope the wind isn't too bad. Okay, so the first question, what's her name? If you've been following me since either late 2017 or even late 2018 on my Instagram, you'll know her as Dancer but I've changed her name to Avanti. Okay, next question. Was she free? She was free, but we did pay $100 for her. Um, why another pony? Another pony because this one we knew since 2017, we think she's got a lot of potential and she was gonna be put down if she wasn't taken. Nobody was taking her, so we've taken her on now instead. How long do you plan on keeping her? I plan on keeping her until uh, the start of next year, so start of 2020, and then I'll sell her on to another home. What is her age, breed, and height? So she is an eight rising nine year old off the track thoroughbred, and she is a bit under 16 hands. I think she's like 15 three and three quarters. She's closer to 16 than 15 three, so I'm rounding it up to 16 hands for convenience instead of saying 15 three and three quarters, just 16. How do you balance your schedule now with a new horse? Well, I actually don't ride Pied that much anymore, as if you follow my Instagram, you'll know. Um, he's not getting competed by me anymore, um, or getting ridden by me regularly anymore. My dad rides him now, so I do have time for two horses. I've just got to use my time wisely. Like I have two hours a day on a school bus, so usually I'll just spend that, that time studying or doing homework anyway, so that does save me a lot of time. And then I'll get home at around quarter to five, and then I'll work the ponies. So I do have a bit of a schedule going on. Um, if you want to see what it is, I've got a daily routine video and I'll link that in the description below. Um, next question, will you compete her this year? I most probably will be by the end of the year. I'd like to take her to a few, a few show jumping, possibly eventing competitions. I have no idea what she's going to be like in eventing. I don't know what she's going to be like in cross country, but we will see. But for the first few months of her ridden career, I'm just going to be doing flat work. And then in, I hope, two to three months we'll be jumping. But I would like to have her competing by maybe August, September. Um, will you event her? Possibly. Depends how she goes cross country schooling if I decide to take her out and stuff. Um, plans with her. So I bought her as a project. She is very, very, very green. She technically hasn't been in proper work since she was about four years old. So she is still sort of getting the hang of lunging. A little bit. She's way better than what she was though. Last time I saw her, which was late 2018, and I think that's because the owner has been doing work with her um, prior to me taking her, which was really helpful. But um, I just want to basically get her back on track and then get her going well enough that she can accept other riders. So the plan is to get her um, going well enough to sell by the start of next year. Have you owned her before? No, but I did meet her, as I said, in late 2017. I rode her three times. And then late 2018, we went to buy her and that fell through because she was a bit lame. We weren't entirely sure why, but we um, didn't want to buy a lame horse. And then we found out, pony, stand still. And then we found out that she was going to get put down. So we were like, okay, we'll take her if she's lame, then we'll have to sort something else out. And if she's not, then we'll train her up. And so she is not lame at the moment. She has got a large scar down the inside of her hind left, but that is not affecting her at all. She will just never be a show pony, but she's not lame or anything at all. It's just a sort of scab now. It's not affecting her. Is she the horse? Ah, stop it. Is she the horse that needed a home? Yes, she is one of the three horses that I put on my story that needed to find homes ASAP or they would be put down. Is she a project or a forever horse project? What will you be doing with her? Depends on how she feels. <clears throat> I would like to do eventing with her. I have no idea what she's gonna be like. I 
think that she might struggle to pick up cross country, but we'll see how she goes, just because she's a little bit nervous and has some issues with going away from other horses because she's been just in a paddock with a herd for five years old. So she's not really used to being taken away. So I'm just going to start her off with some show jumping and we'll see if she feels up to eventing. Uh -uh. What is your goal with her? Just basically to probably get her going well enough that she can go to a few outings by the end of the year and possibly place in some classes, we'll see. Just depends on her and how quickly she progresses under saddle because she is so green. She really hasn't had much experience off the track at all, if any. Um, has her tail grown since you last saw her? Yes, it has. So if you um, were following me in, in late 20, um, 2018, you'll know that like when I went to view her, her tail was cut incredibly short because she had some barbed wire in it and they had to cut it all off because they couldn't get it out. So she literally looked like a yearling. But it has grown now, it's at her hocks now. Are you trying to show everyone your tail? Okay. So as you can see, it's just at her hocks now. It's not long, but it's not as short as it was, so. Are you going to be showing together? I really hope that I can get her to some shows at the end of the year, but yeah, probably I will take her to some shows regardless. Um, before I sell her on. What made you choose the name of Vanti? So basically I asked people for some name suggestions on Instagram and everyone's like, oh my God, you're getting a new horse. But I was like, no, I'm not. What are you talking about? <laughs> I just need names because I felt like knowing some horse names. So somebody on Instagram at bay.bud suggested the name of Vanti and I really liked it. So I searched it up on the Urban Dictionary and I saw the meaning of it and stuff and I was like, that's her. So I chose Avanti. And I got rid of her old name, Dancer, just because, I don't know, I just didn't feel like it suited her that well. Why did you get her and take her on? Again, same thing, um, I didn't want her to get put down and I felt like I could do something with her. So, I'm giving it a shot. And so far, in four days, she's made so much progress, it's insane. Um, how high in show jumping and avanting? Very clever. Are you hoping to get her? Show jumping, I've got no idea. Anywhere from 65 to 85, 95 maybe, we'll see. Just depends on how she goes. <laughs> what is her story? So basically, what, from what I've heard, um, she sold for $8,000 at Magic Millions as a yearling. She went and trialed twice as a four-year-old, getting seven out of seven and seven out of eight, I think. So obviously it was too slow to be a racehorse. So she sold to a couple, I think, and then they divorced. Neither one wanted the horse because apparently she was dangerous. I don't think you're dangerous. No, I don't. No, I don't. She's just sensitive. So her old owner went, look, I'll take her, and she walked her, I think it was seven kilometers. Something like that. Anyway, she walked a couple Ks at like midnight or something to get her from one property to the other because I don't think that they had a float. So she just was walked there and has pretty much been sitting in the paddock since then. She's been pulled out a couple times, you know, just being lunched and when some people have ridden her. But she really hasn't had much work done. She's had a bit of lunging now, but not much ridden at all. Like not properly since she was about four and she is eight. So we'll see how she goes. How did you meet her? So one of my friends, um, Felicity, she came to visit mine for three days in late 2017 and I went to hers for three days and Avanti was kept at the same adjustment as her. So um, the owner of Avanti said, look, ride some of the horses. So I rode, I rode four horses there. Avanti was one of them. And I, she was the main one that I really, really loved. She was the only one that I really clicked with. She was also the only mare. Um, so since then, I've sort of kept my eye out for her. And then, you know, she came up for sale with, you know, possibilities of being put down and nobody wanted her. So I was like, nah, I'm taking her. She's not getting put down. Um, how did you hear about her? So I heard about her from Felicity, like sharing on her story that there was three horses that needed to be sold or they would get put down. Um, updates, all three of them sold, all three of them are really happy in their new homes. None of the horses got put down because they all sold in time. She was the last one to leave the property. And so yeah, that is all of the questions. I'm going to work with her now, just in case you wanted to see 
what I do with her. Basically on a day to day basis I'll do it once or twice a day except today we're doing something new. I might put a saddle on, we'll see. She is broke to saddle um, but she's just really really green and hasn't had much. I think the last time she was ridden was a couple months ago. And I'll probably be doing like a um, video where I show like day to day progress. We'll see if I get time. Let's get these fun things, okay? I really hope the wind wasn't too shocking. So my general rundown is that I will sort of play the seven Pirelli games with her, but I'm not going to include that because I can put that into another video. Um, but I'm just going to lunge her for a little while and the ground is pretty terrible. It's very boggy and there's a lot of potholes, so she does look a little bit clumsy and stuff, but it's really just the ground's not great. And so I'm just going to ask her to stop so I can put her bridle on and bit her up because she hasn't really had a bridle on very often for the last five years. So I'm just going to get her back into the gist of things. So I've just put it over the top of her halter. And so then this here is the Pirelli friendly game. And so basically I'm just desensitizing her to the rope and its movements by just swinging it over her back and sort of, you know, rubbing her around with it. And then I'll go to picking up her front feet and her back feet because this is an area that she's not quite experienced in. And she has had a little bit of um, troubles with this. And so with this one, as you'll see here, she sort of goes to snap her foot back and sort of half kicks out. And I just, she didn't hit me or anything. And I just went and grabbed her um, leg again and held it there. And then when she held it there, I just let go of the leg and then gave her a release. And so instead of me walking around to the other side, I'm going to make her move around me. Which is just, you know, establishing more of my personal space and furthering that education from the ground. And so I'll just be doing the same thing on the off side. Swinging the rope over her and then doing her front and back legs. And this one she was a bit better with as well. So I just held it there. And I'll repeat this, you know, over and over for anywhere from 5 to 15 minutes, depending on how she's going. If she's going really well, then I'll keep it short and sweet. If she needs a little bit more work, then I'm happy to take that time. So I'll just lunge her for a little bit before I get the saddle and saddle pad out and I'll just let her smell it and acquaint herself with it. And when I go to put the saddle pad on, she's not trying to bite me, she's just inquisitive I think because she wasn't nipping or opening her mouth at all. I think she was just trying to either rub on me because she doesn't have a habit of that or she could have just been trying to examine the tack. But either way, I'm not overly bothered by it because she wasn't nipping or being disrespectful or anything so I just put my hand there and pushed her head away. And the reason why I don't have a lead rope on her is basically because she only had one moment here, which was this bit here. She just sort of sped up and stuff. But if she were to have a massive freak out and I had a lead rope on, she could get it caught in her legs and even freak out more, as well as a lead rope if a horse is truly freaking out over um, tack, if they're scared of it or something, as a young horse maybe if they've not been prepared properly then you really don't have a lot of control just from a lead rope and your horse should have also had the extensive groundwork before putting tack on especially for the first time that they stop and will change direction just off of body language as you can see she's doing here i don't need a lead rope to do any of that and by not having a lead rope you can also keep yourself a safe distance from the horse if they do buck and kick out and stuff so i'm just going to lunge her around and what i'm really going to work on is changing her direction so here I'll step in front of the drive line, and if I need to then call her name or click to get her head to turn in. And so I just really want to make sure that she turns in with her head facing me and her bum facing the outside fence. And this time she got a bit distracted and didn't really see me sort of there and then sort of had to move quickly. So now I'm just going to put in all of the bloopers and basically these are when she was either scotching on direction or just got confused. And I didn't get angry at her or growl or whack her or anything. I just kept on asking the same thing really calmly and just continuously put that pressure on until she moved off of it. And then she did and I just let her continue. And I just think that it's really important to allow the horse to make mistakes and to just continuously ask them something until you get what you want just really calmly.
Now Avanti has sweated quite a bit today because, you know, I gave her a good hard workout. So I'm going to give her some Aqualite, which is basically molasses flavor electrolytes, and you put it in their water. So I'll put the Aqualite in. And I've actually tasted a little bit before and it's actually really nice. So that is the Aqualite. Well, she definitely likes it. Do you like it? You like the molasses flavor? Yeah? So I've just put Pony in here and I'm going to wash her in the front lawn now. And that will be part of a second video, just where I give her a little bit of a makeover. I'm gonna wash her and cut her mane and stuff. I hope you enjoyed this video, um, leave a comment below if you want anything else, I'm running kind of dry on ideas, but yeah, hope you enjoyed this video, thank you for watching, bye!